Good morning and welcome back to another video. We are headed out for the day. I'm quickly gonna whip up a little bit of a pack lunch and then we'll be on our way. Since you last saw us in the dry dock, we've been hanging around the marina and settling into some changes in our personal lives. We're Mel and Paul and we live on a boat, if you didn't know by now. Paul's work life has been facing us with some new challenges. So we were out for a change of scenery and, as usual, we're taking you with to share all the details. is done. Good to know that we won't be going hungry because we are in store for a very, very long walk. I'm gonna have one last cuppa while Paul tends to his roof. He popped his head out and decided it needed a wipe down before we get going. We just ended up parking the car at the old Trent Lock. You've seen us around there before. It cuts off about 20 minutes from the walk. Call us lazy or what you will. And from here, we are just back down there is the sailing club that we've shown you before. But from the sailing club on this little trail is about an hour's walk until we get to the nature reserve. Oh, I didn't tell you. We're going to the Attenborough Nature Reserve. to carry the bag with the food in. Oh, that's Sneak small. Sneaking a treat. Look at these tiny tots. Mid midget gems. That was supposed to be the pudding, not the, the, the pre-course. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to feed on you, man. Not New York. <laughs> Behind me is the visitor center. We obviously bought our packed lunch, but we're just gonna pop in there, see if we can find something to drink, and then find a beautiful place to rest and have our lunch, which I doubt will be hard in our surroundings. Currently trying to find a place to sit to obviously have our have our lunch, but it seems that the benches are in most inopportune places, not where there's a viewing point. I'm so 
Harding. Yeah, because they almost had a Adam for breakfast. Shame. Shame. Full on. Eating a thing, dude. found one. Picked me up a wild elderflower. Something, something. Beautiful. Thank you. They're all the same. All the same. Tuck on in. The visitor centre is lovely. Slightly less grand than what you see in pictures, but I think that's the normal things like that. If, like us, you did not bring a packed lunch, you can totally pick something up there. I had to hold back from uh, buying a few pastries. Sorry, didn't get any duck food. Oh, I found a fresh poop. Excuse me, please. Coming through. I was going to say earlier that seen one swan, seen them all. We were sitting eating and watching the water, but when you live on a boat, you see ducks and birds all the time. So not that it gets old, but it's kind of like, oh, okay, well, what else is there to see? But definitely here, they're more on your face and. Uh, amongst the people and not bothered by them at all. Now I'm sure you're all thirsty for some info on this gem of a nature spot. And here you go. Opened by Sir David Attenborough himself, whose family hailed from the Attenborough village that skirts the reserve, this beautiful complex of flooded former gravel pits and islands provides an exceptional habitat for a wide range of wildlife, all of which are listed on the Nottinghamshire Wildlife website. Just a quick Google away. Come on guys, you know we're only here for the pretty pictures, right? We can however share from experience that the Erewash Trail along the Trent heading towards the reserve is a peaceful walk, but with only sneak peeks of the river between the bushes, we definitely feel we'd have preferred the view from the boat. Homeward bound. Homeward bound. Had a good few days home. Uh, I've got a new job, which is uh, down in Oxford. So I uh, work a few days on, five, it's like five days on, and a few days off. So I come home, spend my five days off with Melissa, and then I go back down to Oxford. That's why we had like a mad rush to try and get everything done before I started work again. Uh, excited to be working again. Uh, it's new things for the future. Mm. We're definitely going to see in the future if we can use the gaps to do some short cruises. We've already mapped them all out and that's why we love living in this area. But being that we only just finished the prop and have been busy with all those boat jobs, uh, knowing that she's fully intact in terms of working order is grand. And we're just going to leave it like that for a while. Once we get all our situation sorted out, and I'm settled, basically, you know, I'm yeah, and settled stash some money away for when we're cruising and problems arise as they always are gonna and in the meantime we will just keep you entertained on our excursions when Paul's not at work. In other news you might remember back in May when we did a little cruise to Willington what we thought would be smooth sailing a calm week out on the cut turned into a week of problems and among them a broken Wabasto diesel heater. Hey presto. Hey presto. All out. Do you want me to take that from you? You almost think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, still have to diagnose the problem. 
Paul removed the unit and took it apart to diagnose the problem. He then replaced the burner unit and we spent a long night reinstalling it and getting it going again. And going again it was, until now, when it wasn't. I came home and then I tried to put the diesel heats on and uh, it wasn't working. So I pulled it apart. Well, I tested if it was getting fuel. And there was like a tiny little piece of rust that was stuck in the pipe. Uh, so I spent the whole of yesterday getting that out. Didn't record it because it was more a frustration than anything, but I ended up sticking locking wire up the pipes and pushing everything out of them to try to clear them. And then I got it out eventually. It was actually blocked inside of the tank on the piece of the pipe that's inside of the fuel tank. So I got that out and now it seems to be working again. So, yeah. Just in time for the winter chill. Just in time for the winter chill. But I think maybe that was why the other one, uh, the burner unit packed up because it wasn't getting enough fuel. So. Yeah. I always love seeing those little cabins that you get along rivers, especially when people have boats outside of them. That looks like a restoration project, but I always just think, what a dream to have your little cabin on the hill and your boat down below. That would be living it up. Goals. Goals. <laughs> Half goals, what I want. <laughs> We're actually trying to get ready to go, but Mr. Swan here is not allowing me to do the cover. <laughs> I normally sit just here and roll up the front cover, it's the only way. Oh, bow thrust, I'll get ya. <laughs> Guess I'm free to roll it up now. <laughs> nope. You never get food here. I don't know why you always feel the need to come and ask, to be honest. We're not very giving to the bird community. You get enough elsewhere, hey? You sure do. Just living our best boat life, one trip to the pump out after another. It was around this point where I realised the bow thrust battery hadn't charged and it was camera down to leg it off the boats on the other side. That became hair raising rather quickly. We're moving the boat out, there's a new boat next to us which is super long so getting out was different and then we realized our bath thruster wasn't charged and it's windy. So we normally rely on that to like get us through and super stressful <laughs> running up and down the gunnels, pushing off boats to make sure that we don't sort of knock anybody. I think let's just get through this pump out trip and we'll pick this up later. super windy out so we decided just to turn around by the river uh, recently the marina put a little rope across how we used to make our turning easy um, they made that into like the sales area so I think we told you this before the last time but if it is super windy it's much nicer just to enjoy the scenery along the river test out our prop again we had a leak on the diesel heater this morning Clean up on our five. As I said, Paul is back from a shift. This is our life now. He's away a few days, back a few days. Um, maybe there's some things that I need to learn to check up on, like the recent fixing on the diesel heater. But nevertheless, we just mopped it up and he tightened up what needed tightening up and everything is fine.
all back to normal, fire's on the go. I've just been asked to get some food so we can have a delightful weekend. I often do wonder though how many times we've actually mentioned this toilet excursion on our videos, but that's the thing with boats. It's all about pretty much the loom, water, electricity, all those things that you kind of don't think about when you're living in a house. Paul is just doing some checks in the back there. I think we blew a fuse on the bath thruster. So that's why that wasn't working and we had a horrific time in the wind. Such is boat life. Well, hey, star appearance. Here's the star of the show. No need to hear from me waffling on. How'd all those checks go in the back? We got water leaks, diesel leaks. No more leaks. Hey, how are they? Bit of rugby. Coming home for the treats, eh? When Paul is at work, he lives above a pub on his own and has zero freshly made meals. So he definitely looks forward to coming home, I think. What are these? Treats. Thanks for hanging out with us, folks. We love sharing our little piece of what boat life is like for us. If you enjoy our floating reality, hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks in advance and we'll see you soon.